St. John is getting close. Electrical is in the walls. Drywall is up. Painting has begun. In the next few weeks, we are going to see a lot of painting this week. Drop ceiling follow. The flooring is being finished. Cabinets and finishings. Final inspections. And then. Please pray for the process and that God's people will continue to live generously as we build foundations of faith. Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning, the 17th Sunday after Pentecost, as we gather together today. Uh, today our theme comes out of our epistle reading in Philippians chapter 2, and being like Christ. And what does that mean as we live out our lives as little Christs here in the earth today? We'll explore that topic in our message today. Um, for worship today, we do have Holy Communion. We'll be served in the back of the sanctuary as we depart. Again, invite you to stop at the table, pause, as the elder invites you to take the body of Christ, and then step forward, and there'll be either two pastors or a pastor and an elder in the back, and either one, just move to whichever one's next available, and they'll invite you to take the blood of Christ, and pause there as you receive Christ's blood and the blessing as we then depart out of our worship space. Uh, for those who are in the overflow seating in the um, parish hall, we will uh, have an elder and a pastor who will come down there also to serve you. And for those in the balcony, come down the stairs in front of the sound booth and then uh, out the uh, uh, center aisle for communion. A few other announcements for you. Uh, two weeks from today, on Sunday, October 11th, we have our quarterly voters meeting. That'll be after education hour that day, regular quarterly reports. Also, though, our call committee for the associate pastor position, not that we don't love Pastor Kip, but um, since he's only interim here for a short time, uh, we are looking to call a uh, permanent associate pastor, well, as permanent as calls get anyway. And uh, we've been interviewing candidates, and that call meeting then will be a part of our quarterly voters meeting. So at that meeting, October 11th, the call committee will present their candidates and we'll be voting on extending a call for associate pastor. So Sunday, October 11th, quarterly voters meeting, including call for associate pastor. Other announcements to share with you before we begin our worship today. Uh, tonight, PTL is hosting our fall harvest carnival event. That's gonna be out at Poppy's 
again, the uh, Poppy's Pumpkin Patch from five to eight uh, with our special arrangement through PTL. We have a discount for admission there, so families are invited out there. And then um, this coming week, we have chapel again on Wednesday, but also Bible studies Wednesday morning, 9.30. We have our women's Bible study hosted by Wings and men's Bible study with Pastor Kip. Those all take place in the parish hall at 9.30. And invite all of you, even if you haven't been a part of those yet, you're always welcome to step in and start learning and growing more in God's holy word. Were there any other announcements for things in the coming week that I'm forgetting I was supposed to make? Good. Then uh, let us begin with our first hymn, When Morning Gilds the Skies. Please rise. and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together, as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father. 
seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins as a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority. Therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Let us pray together. Almighty God, you've exalted your Son to the place of all honor and authority. Enlighten our minds by your Holy Spirit, that confessing Jesus as Lord, we may be led into the all truth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Our Old Testament lesson is from the book of Ezekiel, the 18th chapter. The word of the Lord came to me. What do you mean by repeating this proverb concerning the land of Israel? The fathers have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge. As I live, declares the Lord God, this proverb shall no more be used by you in Israel. Behold, all souls are mine. The souls of the Father as well as the soul of the Son is mine. The soul whose sins shall die. Yet you say, the way of the Lord is not just. Hear now, O house of Israel, is my way not just? Is it not your ways that are not just? When a righteous person turns away from his righteousness and does injustice, he shall die for it. For the injustice that he has done, he shall die. Again, when a wicked person turns away from the wickedness he has committed and does what is just and right, he shall save his life. Because he considered and turned away from all the transgressions that he had committed, he shall surely live, he shall not die. Yet the house of Israel says, 
the way of the Lord is not just. O house of Israel, are my ways not just? Is it not your ways that are not just? Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel, every one according to his ways, declares the, the Lord God. Repent and turn from all your transgressions, lest iniquity be your ruin. Cast away from you all the transgressions that you have committed, and make yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. Why will you die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of anyone, declares the Lord God, to turn and live. This is the word of the Lord. Our second reading is Paul's letter to the Philippians chapter 2. So, if there is any encouragement in Christ, any comfort from love, any participation in the Spirit, any affection and sympathy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from rivalry or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interest, but also to the interest of others. Have this in mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in a form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but made himself nothing taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. And being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, so now not only as in my presence, but much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you, both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Do all things without grumbling or questioning. You may be blameless and innocent, children of God without blemish in the midst of the crooked and twisted generation, among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding fast to the word of life, so that in the day of Christ I may be proud that I did not run in vain or labor in vain. Even if I am to be poured out as a drink offering upon the sacrificial offering of your faith, I am glad and rejoice with you all. Likewise, you also should be glad and rejoice with me. This is the word of the Lord. Right. Hallelujah. the Son of God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 21st chapter. And when he entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came up to him as was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? Jesus answered them, I also will ask you one question. And if you tell me the answer, then I also will tell you by what authority I do these things. The baptism of John. From where did it come from? From heaven or from man? 
And they discussed it among themselves, saying, If we say from heaven, he will say to us, Why then did you not believe him? But if we say from man, we are afraid of the crowd. for They all hold that John was a prophet. So they answered Jesus, We do not know. And he said to them, Neither will I tell you by what authority I do these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. They went to the first and said, Son, go and work in the vineyard today. And he answered, I will not. But afterward, he changed his mind and went. And he went to the other son and said the same. And he answered, I go, sir, but did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said, the first. And Jesus said to them, Truly I say to you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes go into the kingdom of God before you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even when you saw it, you did not afterwards change your minds and believe him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Having heard the word of God, let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. You may be seated. Do all things without grumbling or questioning, that you may be blameless and innocent children of God without blemish in the midst of a crooked and twisted generation among whom you shine as lights in the world. Grace, mercy, and peace from our God and Father and our living Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Picture the scene. There you are with your best friend, sitting outside of a cafe, having a cup of coffee, maybe a sandwich, maybe even a dessert. As you laugh together, as you... Um, share moments of joy, so much laughter, you're to the point of tears. And the coffee continues to flow, and uh, you've been sitting there talking and laughing, and you've lost track of time. It's been an hour, maybe two, maybe three, maybe the day is gone. And then all of a sudden, three people wearing dark clothing and dark face mask come up to your table and they start yelling obscenities at you and harassing you, threatening you. How would you feel? Scared? A little unnerved? That scene played itself out this past week in I can't tell if it was Hollywood, Florida, or Hollywood, California. I'm pretty sure it was Florida. As a group of three protesters approached a young, or sorry, an older couple of ladies sitting outside having a cup of coffee, and they started to harass them, even to the point where they were afraid for their lives. And that scene is not just unique to that one cafe in Hollywood, Florida. That scene is similar to scenes we're seeing around the country and scenes we've seen around the world. 
that picture of what does it mean to disagree with people in authority? What does it mean to disagree with the situation going on in the world? What does it mean to disagree with events you've seen on the news? What does that mean? It has suddenly become that it's, that means it's okay, it's a good opportunity to speak with anger and hatred and even violence towards other people for no reason. They're not the ones at whom you're really angry. Dear friends in Christ, what a crooked and twisted generation we find ourselves living among. What a twisted and crooked generation we find ourselves living in. But it is oh all too easy just to look at that event and point our fingers. It's too easy to look at those examples of quote-unquote domestic terrorism or civil unrest and point fingers and say, thank God I am not like those people. You don't have to go to the big city to find angry and hate-filled words of protest. All you have to do is sit in the bleachers at a high school football game. Now, I don't just point fingers at people either. There's a reason that I cannot sit in the bleachers. Where if I'm at a sporting event, I try and desperately beg, can I, can I keep score? Can I work the play clock? Can I do lines? Can I, can I do something besides sit in the bleachers? Because if I sit in the bleachers, I too say things that are words of anger and hatred sometimes. We're all a little guilty of this in some way, shape, or form. Maybe none of us are protesters assaulting people drinking coffee on the street. Maybe you don't even ever go to a football game and yell at the referees or opposing team or even your own coaches. We even hear these words sometimes in church meetings, council meetings, voters meetings, committee meetings, or even just during fellowship hour all with good intent, all with the hope of maybe accomplishing more what I think is better. We've even seen in history, thankfully, not that I can remember in my experience necessarily of a, any of our voters' meetings here at St. John, but I've heard stories. Dear friends, all of these are examples of what happens when our sinful nature begins to run amok. And it's not just out there, it is among us too. Because it happens not just in official meetings, not just in big public sporting events, it happens in private conversations. It happens around dining room tables. It happens on telephone calls. It happens sitting around the church kitchen. It happens sitting in the narthex, putting on your coat. Well, if you could do that, and you can't do that anymore, you gotta wear your coat with you into the sanctuary, thanks to COVID. Way to go, COVID. One less place for us to speak angry at each other. But all of this, dear friends in Christ, is an example of what the Apostle Paul is warning the Philippian Christians not to do. Do all things without grumbling or questioning, that you may be blameless and innocent children of God. Do all things without grumbling or questioning. <clears throat> Excuse me. If you followed along in Philippians chapter 2, this chapter is telling us to be like Christ. To have the same attitude as Christ. And we remember that one easily, you know, oh yeah, sacrifice. I get that, sacrifice. I should love my neighbor, sacrifice. But he continues on and now later on in that chapter, do all things without grumbling or complaining. 
and we can hearken back to the words of Isaiah the prophet who speaks about Jesus being led like a lamb to the slaughter, like a sheep before its shears is silent. Jesus, who faces the most unjust treatment in the history of humanity, what does he say? How does he grumble? How does he complain? How does he argue? How does he express his discontent? How does he protest the violent treatment he is suffering? He extends his hands so that they might be pierced. He bows his head that it might be crowned with thorns. And he sighs out his last breath that your breath is not your last. He willingly dies for you that he may live forever with you. That's how we follow Jesus. That's what it means to take up your cross and follow Jesus. That's what it means to have this attitude among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus. This is what it means to have Christ in us and to have Christ be seen through us. How many of you call yourselves Christian? If you're not raising your hand, or sorry, if your neighbor's not raising your hand, kind of tap them a little bit, wake them up, because they probably fell asleep. Otherwise, I don't know why they're here today. Okay. How many of you call yourselves Christian? Now, what does it mean to be Christian? What does that word mean? It means a little Christ. It means to have Christ, a little Christ within us, and to be little Christs to the world around us. It means that when people look at us, they should be able, they ought to be able to see Jesus. Dear friends in Christ, I want you to ask yourself that question next football game you're at. Would that line judge know that I have Jesus in me? I want you to ask yourself that the next time you're yelling at your TV over some political commentary. If they could hear me, would they know I have Jesus in me? I want you to ask yourself that question next time you're debating with somebody else about your favorite nonprofit organizations. If they could hear me, do they know I have Jesus in me? I want you to ask yourself that next time you're even arguing with your spouse or your parents or your children. Whenever you are grumbling or complaining with your coworkers or to your boss or to your employees, do they know I have Jesus in me? And then, dear friends in Christ, accept this challenge. I am going to wear Jesus everywhere I go. I am going to live my life loving my neighbor like Jesus. I'm going to live every day showing Jesus in my words and in my actions. I am going to let Jesus be seen through me. There's a message in the Gospels during the Sermon on the Mount when Jesus says, you... And he is pointing at his crowd. You can just picture this. Maybe not physically. I wasn't there to see the pictures. But the words, you are the light of the world. It's easy to look at Jesus and say, Jesus, you are the light of the world. But that's not what Jesus does. Jesus looks at the crowd and he says, you are the light of the world. I've seen some people in that crowd not the one on the hill outside where Jesus was giving the Sermon on the Mount, but the crowd who he speaks to still today. You are the light of the world. 
And I've heard Jesus look at me and say, you are the light of the world and we've all seen the darkness that is in us and in each of us. And what does Jesus do with that darkness? He shines into it. The brightness of his glory that overwhelms us and now makes us to be lights to those around us. What a crooked and twisted generation we find ourselves in. Called to be lights in that world. Called to shine like the sun in that world. Called to shine forth the glory of God through us into that world. To be different than that world for the sake of that world. Brothers and sisters in Christ, be different than the world. May the peace of God, which passes all of our understanding, guard and direct your hearts and your minds through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Let us pray. Lord, grant us all both vigorous missionary zeal and fervent faithfulness to fan into flame the gift of God, the task of building up the church by sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ to those who do not know him. Lead the voices of the return to God prayer that could be happening this weekend at the Lincoln Memorial in D.C. and nationwide. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, Holy Spirit, continue to lead the call committee as they consider the candidates for associate pastor here at St. John's. Provide them the wisdom and discernment to review their gifts that would best fit the ministry here. Grant us all unity in the way that you want us to go. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we pray for all who are hospitalized, shut in, ill, facing surgery or rehab. We especially pray for Millie and Randy, Eileen and Colton, Taylor, Karen, Vicki, Ardeth, April, Lisa, Jerry, and Mike. Lord, grant health and healing according to your good and gracious will. Pour out your peace to the families that they may know the depth of your love. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we pray for all who commune at this altar today, that their hearts and minds and actions may faithfully proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, together with the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever, and all God's people say, Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good and salutary that we should at all times and at all places proclaim your word of peace wherever we go. Help us by your Holy Spirit to be able to bring comfort to those who are angry. And not point fingers at them, but point our fingers to Jesus Christ. And therefore, we come before evermore you praising you and singing. Holy, holy Lord, God of Sabaoth, adore heaven and earth, your full acclaim. Shout the glory of your name. Sing, O It is comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of all creation. We have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes him should not perish but have eternal life. In your righteous judgment, you condemn the sin of Adam and Eve, who ate of the forbidden fruit and you justly barred them and all their children from the tree of life. Yet in your great mercy you promised salvation by a second Adam, your son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and made his cross a life-giving tree for all who trust in him. We give you thanks for the redemption that you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruit of his cross, and receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in his body and blood. Hear us as we pray in the name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. When he gave him thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way, also, we took the cup after supper. 
When he given thanks, he gave to them and said, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is new covenant in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
下。